If you own your own mechanical keyboard and you want to make it just a bit better, this video is for you. So keyboard enthusiasts love to tinker with their keyboards and find ways to make them better any way they can. This is how looping switches and stabilizers was discovered. So people generally do this to drown out the sounds from their keyboard. It basically makes your switches have less of a mechanical feel and more of a smooth one. So if you own linear or tactile switches, then looping them would make your keyboard overall better. But if you own clicky switches, then please don't lube them. The whole point of lubing switches is to drown out the noise. So lubing clicky switches, which are made to create more noise, just defeats the purpose. So in order to lube your switches and stabilizers, you'll obviously need lube. The preferred and more tried and tested lube in the keyboard community is Crytox 205G0. However, it could be difficult to get your hands on it. I recommend other lubricants such as Dialectic Grease or the one I'm using today, which is G Lube or Glorious Lube. You could also use Tribosis 3203. So you'll also need a brush, a switch opener, and obviously your switches and stabilizers. The first thing you have to do is take apart your switches, and to do this you'll need a switch opener, which you can find at any tech store. You'll need to position the switch on the opener and push as hard as you can until you hear a click sound and the switch pops open. So you'll need to do this with all the switches you need to do. Eventually you'll end up with four parts, the upper housing, bottom housing, stem, and spring. Each of these parts have to be looped separately and in different ways. Separate the parts into four groups just to make the whole process easier. So your upper housing doesn't necessarily need to be looped, so you can set that aside. So first, springs. Springs are the most fun part to lube in my opinion. You're gonna need an airtight plastic bag to do it. So first, open the bag and take a generous amount of lube and smear it all over the inside. Try and get the lube evenly spread, especially if you're using a thicker lube. Next, pour all the springs in there and make sure you shut the bag tight and then start shaking. You're gonna need to shake until the springs are visibly completely covered. Finally, open up the bag and take out the springs. Sometimes the springs can get tangled with each other, so you might have to separate them. So next, the stem. So for the stem, you're gonna need a paintbrush. All you have to do is carefully brush all sides of the stem with lube. I always see people using way too much on their stems, so you're gonna need to make sure that you can't see any white residue. The look you're going for is for the stem to look a bit shiny. So you're gonna need to apply it to three areas on the stem, the rails, contact area, and the legs. I only recommend lubing the legs if you're doing linear switches. However, if you're doing tactile, then you don't really need to do that. Now, as for the bottom housing, all you have to do is brush a very little amount of lube where the stem rails rub on the sides. Switches have a gold plate dubbed a leaf that lies near the bottom housing. The place you should be lubing is on either side of the leaf. Make sure no lube touches the leaf because that's actually what programmed the switch. Also, again, if you see white residue, you're doing it wrong. Now, as for the stabilizers, you're also going to need to open them up. Stabilizers have three parts, the stems, housing, and the wire. I recommend separating the parts into three groups because it just becomes easier to lube. The stems don't necessarily need to be lubed because you're already going to be lubing the wire and the housing. For the wires, all you're going to need to do is take either end of it and dip it in the loop. Again, make sure not to use too much. Now as for the housing, take your paintbrush and apply a small amount of loop on the inside surface of the housing, making sure you don't see any white residue. Then all you need to do is put them back together like I'm doing here. And that's it, you're done. Lubing switches and stabilizers are generally really easy and definitely the first modification I recommend beginners to try on their keyboards. If you want a more detailed explanation, there is a guide up on my website which I'll be putting in the description. So I hope you learned a lot from this video and thank you so much for watching.